I want to make sure we got that. I wanted to thank Ariel Martinez and everybody, a part of the um, uh, Alumni Advisory Board for putting this together. This was their work because they are the ones that went to the workforce, which they had this as students, and now as alumni want to give that to our students. And, um, and, and everybody at the alumni board worked very hard to put this together. I, I can't thank them enough for making this happen. Without them, you know, we're not able to have this great insight from a terrific panel of people that will help you uh, in your job search and, and looking in that regard, okay? So with that said, I'd like to introduce the panel that we have today. Um, for starters, I'm gonna introduce Marcy McGinnis. Uh, Marcy is a, a professional career coach who's used her extensive experience at CBS News and Stony Brook School of Journalism to help people in all stages of their career, ranging from entry level to senior management. In her capacity, um, at CBS Senior Vice President, Marcy reviewed thousands of resumes. I can't imagine what that was like, God bless you, and videos of potential on-air and off-air candidates. And as Associate Dean of the School of Journalism, Marcy helped guide hundreds of students in all stages of their job search. So Marcy, hello, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Phil. Hey, thank okay. you. It means a lot to do to, to that. So looking forward to, to that insight for sure. Uh, next, I want to also introduce Rachel Eiler. A re, uh, I, I could say recent alum, right? Yeah, yeah I'm not that old yet. <laughs> right, you know, we're, we're a recent alum uh, of the School of uh, Journalism. Um, basically, she is just the investigative reporter and weekend anchor of WF. Sorry, apologize. WJFW Newswatch 12 in Wisconsin. Um, so she has done a lot of work in on air and off air and in production and producing. Um, she's also used a variety of tools at her disposal to create her visual medium from traditional broadcast to DSLR, whatnot. So, uh, Rachel, I just want to welcome you. Thanks for having me. Excited to see all your work, guys. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, next, I also want to introduce Joseph Ryder. Joseph Ryder, I'm still going to say recent grad. It's been a couple of years longer than Rachel, but not by much. Um, not only is Joe Ryder uh, community relations for the NYPD, um, he's a freelance photographer and videographer with, with working for people such as the New York Mets, um, done a lot of innovative work in uh, multimedia and really is kind of this real techno wizard when it comes to the tools of creating your reel. Um, you know, it's one thing to want to make the reel, but how do you do it? And there's been a lot of different tricks and tools of the trade that Joe has introduced me to that I've been able to use in the School of Journalism. And um, I'm happy to see his insight in how to create reels for specific categories and then how to create a reel from the beginning to the end. So Joe, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Okay. And then next, I'd like to talk to uh, Jess Suarez. Jessica Suarez. Sorry, I didn't mean to use the uh, nickname there. Jessica Suarez, uh, a graduate also of the School of Journalism. And she is right now a talent acquisition recruiter for Newsday. Uh, Jessica, could you tell us a little bit about what that job is? Yeah, sure. So um, basically, I, you know, look at resumes all day long, <laughs> not only resumes, but reels, um, because we have a new television studio and we are full steam diving into TV news. So, you know, we're looking for anchors, producers, everything like that in the last past year. Um, obviously, COVID has put a little bit of a wrench into that, but, you know, we're pretty much full steam ahead again. So, uh, you know, I've been looking at a lot of, uh, a lot of reels these past, this past year. So. <laughs> That's amazing. That's really terrific. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much, Jessica. I appreciate it. Of course. Ne next up we have, uh, Jonathan, uh, Millen. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I apologize. I say that right. Uh, million. Million. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, also a graduate of the program, and he is the producer of the 6 a.m. show for ABC's local affiliate Eyewitness News. So, uh, Jonathan, want to welcome you as well. Uh, appreciate it. And um, you brought some interesting, you linked me some, some videos and interesting insights um, that I think we'll look forward to as well, Jonathan. So, welcome. 
Thank you. Okay. And I believe the last, but certainly not least of our panelists is uh, Matthew Moskowitz. Um, Matthew Moskowitz graduated from Stony Brook with a BA in English in 1995. Uh, he minored in print journalism. He has served on the professional advisory board for Stony Brook School of Journalism and Communication since 2008. So basically right from the beginning, um, he's been on board with us and has seen our journey go through the years. Um, he is an award-winning editor and producer, has been at CNN since 1996. Uh, but he began his career as an intern at News 12 Long Island in 1992, so a ton of experience in broadcast news as well. And uh, Matthew, it means a lot to have you here. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here. Okay, so let's get things started a little bit. Um, what I'd like to know, um, oh, we got a Barbara wanted to mention that um, Journalism, Jonathan and Joe are recent additions to the alumni board, and Rachel was one of the alums who came to us with the idea for the workshops too. So um, thank you all so much for all of this and, and for continuing support of the alumni board too. As you could see, when you graduate, you know, being a part of the alumni board helps us with programs like this for current students. We are always evolving. It's not just enough what we do in the school directly, but having alumni participation of what's going on outside that could benefit our students currently is a nice cycle we'd like to keep going on an aggressive level. So thank you both to Jonathan and Joe for that help and Rachel for the great suggestion. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, I'd like to start off with Marcy. Um, a lot of questions that we get is, you know, what is a real? Why is it important to have a reel? And with your experience in this, in the tool for job search, you know, how, how do you break the importance down of a reel and what people may be looking for in, in, in such? Um, okay, well, thank you everybody for, for coming to this and thank you, Phil, for that question and the introduction. Um, the reel is vital, right? The reel is vital because you're uh, applying for a job in a visual medium. You're applying for a job on the air. Uh, so what's the point of someone just looking at a resume if they haven't been able to see what it is you can actually do, what you look like, how you are on camera, um, how you present yourself, the kinds of stories you do, um, and, and uh, the work that went behind them. So, you know, your cover letter and your resume can add to whatever heft you need uh, to add to that reel. But the reel is going to be very important in terms of somebody looking very quickly to see right away if they like it or they don't like it. So I don't wanna break your hearts, those people that are applying for jobs, but recruiters don't spend a huge amount of time on each tape. So it's really important to put your best stuff first because you know they have a lot of things to do. They have a lot of tapes to go through. And I'm telling you, when I used to um, watch tapes of potential reporters uh, coming to CBS, I, we put that tape in the machine. Those days it was a tape in a machine. And, you know, maybe I'd look for about two minutes. So, you know, if somebody was lucky, I'd look for two minutes. So you wanna make sure that maybe the ver first thing that they see is a, is a quick highlight of quick cuts of you on the air, you know, um, intros, you know, just very quick cuts of, of so they can get an idea what you look like put a few things in there of stand-ups, put a few things in there of ad-libbing. Um, if you do any anchoring, put a couple of shots in there of your anchoring. Um, and then after your quick shots of your on cameras, you wanna probably put your best piece, your best story that you've, that you've ever done um, next, because that's what they're gonna be looking at. After they look and see if they like what they see, the next thing is, do they like what they, you know, what they can imagine on their air. So you wanna put your next, your, your best piece. If you do an investigative piece or whatever, put that next. And then maybe depending on what kind of piece that was, if it was an investigative piece, for example, maybe the next piece is a lighter piece just to show that you can do features or you can do something lighter than an investigation. Um, what's important also is to know if you're applying for a specific job, 
Like if you're applying for the medical reporter at a station, then I hope you've got a piece that has to do with medicine because that's what you would put first. If you're applying for an investigative job, you would put your investigative job first. If you're applying for a general assignment job, then put your best piece, your best general piece first. But if you're applying for a specific beat, put your best beat piece on first. That's great. So this is really, I mean, it's, it's, I think what we want to talk about, you know, is like, not only is it good to have a reel, but it's probably good to have multiple reels that show a variety of work, depending upon the specific job that you're applying for. So when you apply for these jobs, if you correct me if I'm wrong, it's not just click send, move to the next job and go through, you know, whatever it is, you really need to take that few extra minutes to really center your work for what you like to do. So I think now we'll go over to Matthew to kind of continue on that thought, especially since you've been at CNN for so long. Um, what, you know, expand on that idea of, you know, when you when people are looking to get a job, what leads to a strong candidate getting more closer to the top uh, and maybe get that extra minute or two of viewing uh, of their work or an extra minute or two of attention? Well, you know, it's just what Marcy said is, you know, putting your best foot forward. It's like, think of it as a, as a video resume is really what it is. You know, you want to highlight your best, um, your best attributes first and, and really tell why should they hire you over the next person. You, you need to sell yourself in the best way possible. I mean, I've spent the past, you know, uh, 26 years or so in, in the edit room. That's what I do. I'm, I'm an editor producer, so I do the video work. So the kinds of reels that I've seen um, for the most part are prospective editor producers um, who I work with. And same, you know, what Marcy just said is if you're applying for a specific uh, type of a show, whether it be medical or hard news or documentary, you wanna show what you can do in that specific area first. And again, you know, I know everybody's got so many things, but narrow it down, take your best pieces and put it out there. You don't want to bore them. And truthfully, you're not even going to have a chance to bore them because really, like Marcy said, you put the tape in the machine, hit play, watch a little snippet of it. Okay, yes or no. And then take it out and put it in again. Granted, we can talk about tapes. I don't, you guys know what tapes are probably some of you. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, you know, that's, that's the truth is that, you know, even now if they click on your link or they put, you know, your YouTube video, whatever it is, they're going to watch the first little bit of it and say, yes, this person looks like someone we should look into or no, you know what, let's move on. So, um, you know, again, it's really just putting your best foot forward, thinking of it as a, a video resume, uh, whether you're applying for an on-air position or a technical, you know, an editing position, you know, like, like I'm in, or, or wherever you're going, even your camera work, whatever it is, best foot forward, um, be dead on to the uh, topic that you're applying for and, uh, and go from there. Great. Thank you so much. That's excellent. So let's kind of start to kind of go a little bit on that kind of wavelength. I'd like to bring in Rachel right now because you just very recently, you know, had to do just that. You had to tailor your resume and tailor your reel to getting specific jobs. And that ended up working out for you quite well. You were telling me a little bit offline um, about some of the reels you were looking back on that, a little trip down memory lane in 2019 of what you had to do and what you have. So I want to talk a little bit about that process, you know, going on from what Marcy Matthew were talking about is, you know, how do you start to create when you have so much work to show because you had no shortage of work to display? How did you go through that process, Rachel? Yeah, certainly. <clears throat> kind of how Marcy was saying, uh, I have three different reels right now and I'm a year into my job. Um, I recreate my reel probably every six months just to kind of refresh and uh, also so I just don't lose footage. Um, speaking professionally now in my career, anytime I do a good stand up or I know I had a really great live hit, I automatically have a folder that says, okay, that's for your reel. Um, and again, this way, because if you wait, let's say your contract at a job is two years and you wait two years to put your first reel together to move on, you're not going to know where to start. You're going to feel really lost. And I kind of advise you to do the same thing as you kind of finish out your last few months at Stony Brook is go through some of your stuff, 
and put it in a folder said, oh, that was really great. Or mm, I know I was a little jarring on that, or that wasn't my best shot. Maybe I stumbled. Don't put that on your reel. Um, yeah. So I was looking back when I got invited to do this panel, I was looking back at my first reel. It was very sad to watch um, because <laughs> my reel, what did not feature any packages, did not show my um, creativeness in any of my standups. Um, it didn't even really show my personality. How I got so many job offers, I don't really know. I leave that up to God and a prayer that I have a job now. Um, but from what I was talking with my, the person who did hire me, my news recruiter, what he said to me and is something that you do need to showcase very much in your reel is he said he saw my personality, he saw my passion for the field, and he saw that I had a lot of growth and I would bring something new to the table. Um, and with that, it kind of expanded on that. At Stern you only obviously do so many stand-ups and um, do so many packages. I know for myself, if I really thought about it, I don't even really think I would have that many packages to submit in my reel that would have showcased. Um, so that was kind of on my part. I was a little bit at a disadvantage. Um, so what I know now looking back is I could have done some stuff from my internship that I had. So instead of just including one of my live hits from an internship, I could have just included an entire segment. Um, altogether, my reel was maybe two minutes long. Um, again, how I got the job, I don't really know. <laughs> um, but now looking at this difference, like I said, I have three different reels at this point. I have my anchor reel, I have my reporter reel, and then I have my investigative reporter reel. And my anchor reel does not show any of my standups. It might have a live hit here and there to show that, hey, if there's breaking news out in the field and they need somebody, I can do that. But other than that, I have shots um, from my weekend show of me at the desk, me on chroma wall, me interacting with some of my reporters and doing tosses or ad-libbing weather or talking a little bit more about a story. It's not just me reading a VOSA or introducing a package or introducing breaking news. It has a large variety to show that, okay, I can obviously read a teleprompter. Great. I obviously have a news voice. Great. But in the moment, can I think on my feet? Um, there is one part where we did get interrupted in breaking news and I had to cut away from a story and I did include that in my reel um, because it shows that, hey, in a second, I can hear what I have in my IFB and I can go with it. Um, and some recruiters that I spoke to um, didn't like that I had that in there because it could I they didn't really say why, but it just was very jarring to see. Other recruiters really loved it. Um, so it really depends on who you're interviewing with or who is watching your stuff. Um, I've gotten feedback from my reels saying they really hated it. I have had feedback saying they really liked it. Um, the biggest thing that I've heard though is that my personality really comes through on my reel that doesn't showcase what it does on my resume. On my resume, they can see that I'm a really ambitious person. I've worked here and I've worked there and I've done this and that. When they see my face and they hear my voice, it all comes together for them. Um, and so for me, kind of also how Marcy was saying, my investigative reel is very different from my reporter reel. My standups, um, my montage standups are just as fast paced, but they're more hard news. Um, they're still creative, there's still creativity in it, but it's definitely, when I say there's interaction, it's definitely more so moving with the camera instead of maybe having my general reel, well, I have creative standups of um, double takes or I'll move the camera to a different scene. Um, so they're more lighthearted. Um, my investigative reel also uh, has an investigative piece on it, obviously, right? And if I didn't include that, I would be kind of silly not to. Um, and on top of that, instead of doing a, a creative piece, I also have a more general political piece, which is more hard news to show that if I'm not good for this beat, well, I'm also good for this beat. And it shows more of what I can do as a reporter. And like I said, every six months, I update my reel. Even if the packages don't change or the or vice versa, the standups don't change. Um, if I know that maybe I have a better live hit than another live hit, um, it looks really well. The advice that I've gotten, which at Marcy, I don't know how you would feel about this. In my original reel, I had a lot of hair changes. <laughs> I went from long hair to short hair, to black hair, to red hair, to this. 
keep them all together is what I was told instead of having them spread out. <laughs> um, even now, when I went into this job, I had very short hair and now it's this length and I've learned to kind of create a timeline with it. Um, Cause the number one thing I got during interviews was they said to me, you change your hair a lot, don't you? And I was like, no, not really. They're just from all over, but um, you wanna be consistent essentially um, with everything that you do. Um, that goes with standups too. If you have a few of the same standups, um, try and keep them together to show different varieties of movement and whatnot. So um, definitely, you know, really, that's what I feel like all I can say on that. I don't know if you'll get a follow up or, or whatnot, but uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, it's really it, it, in detail. We could see it's just even like the obvious things between the three different reels for the jobs looking for. Then it's something that's not as obvious as something like haircuts matter like who would have thought that you know i haven't thought about my hair in decades um and to think that that, <laughs> oh, so it's very good so i um you know to think that that makes a little bit of sense like you know how do you present yourself on camera right and and how does that you know tell the story of you um, and with that, I kind of want to go over to Jonathan, because you emailed me an interesting uh, observation, something you wanted to talk about with your work over at um, Eyewitness News in New York. And uh, Bill Ritter, uh, uh, that I'm familiar, if you're familiar with him, um, the students wise, better probably explain this than I can, is just an iconic news anchor in, that serves local news in the New York area, who Jonathan works with on a daily basis. And kind of tagging on Rachel's idea about personality, you, you want to talk about the importance of personality over technique, and you would refer to uh, Bill Ritter in that note. Am I characterizing that correctly, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, um, I don't, I, did you, uh, did you want to, did you want to play part of that now or, or oh, you, so you talk a little bit about it. You can play a little bit of it now. Absolutely. To get an yeah. idea of what we mean by personality over yeah. technique. Cause I think that could get a little bit bogged down. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not very good with like zoom. I don't know if I'm supposed to play that or you're supposed to play it, but I think that the best thing to do is if we're going to watch at any point now would be the best time. And then I would just, sure. Uh, I have the three links of videos you would send to me. Is that the yeah. one? with us uh, so you're talking about um the countdown president yes, biden is that, that's that right. the one you want yeah. okay yeah. I, I could share that one i wasn't sure if that was let me just try that real quick and refresh it yeah yeah um so why don't you talk a little bit about it and i'll get it queued up yeah for us. sure 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 so um basically i was trying to think about you know uh ways that uh you know you guys could separate yourselves in, in terms of like you know looking for your first jobs out of uh college and um you know i've been in uh, TV news now in New York City for about a decade, and I've worked with you know many uh, you know reporters and anchors over the years. And the thing that I have uh, kind of like gleaned from it up to this point that uh, being one of the most important things is um, just kind of being a captivating storyteller, and that does not mean being the best kind of like you know, uh, purveyor of like uh, uh, a news voice, you know, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, sounding like, you know, Walter Cronkite or something. You don't, it, that, do, don't overvalue something like that. What you should be putting an emphasis on is what makes you most interesting, you know, as a, as, as a journalist, as a reporter, what kind of, uh, you know, you think about, you know, what your friends like most about you uh, in terms of, you know, how you have a, you know, uh, even just a, you know, tell a story to them. It doesn't have to be a news story, but it, it just, you know, uh, kind of daily conversation. And you want to kind of emphasize those, those traits. Um, and I mean, Phil, you don't really have to play, you don't have to play the clip if, if, if it's going to be a thing, but I, I can, I, I can kind of just talk specifically about, uh, Bill. I, 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 if you'd like to, I could play a little bit of it. I have a queued up ready to go. I, I had to wait through all those, um, you know, the commercial and oh, you know, yeah, yeah. do you want to so, buy bounty paper well, towels? I, I went, I skipped all that before you everybody. Just play, just play, just play his toss to the first, uh, to the first report. So it's probably about okay. seconds. Sure. That's what I'll go ahead and I'll do. Let me do my share screen, share sound. And then, um, okay, so I think you all can see this. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and then I'll hit play. Hello, everyone. I'm Joel Ritter of Channel 7 Eyewitness News, WABC TV, and welcome once again to the countdown. The last time we got any new states in this country, 1959, Alaska, 
and Hawaii. Tonight, a step forward for a bid to create a 51st state in this country. Can you guess which one it was? We'll get to that in a moment, but first it's Earth Day and President Biden with a bold plan, slash greenhouse emissions in half by the year 2030. President revealing his goal at a virtual global climate summit with 40 world leaders right, so today to reach it. that target. Okay. Biden yeah. Got it. Okay, but great. So what is it you want us, us to get from that? Yeah, um, that was actually a different clip. Uh, that was like the first, uh, that, that was, that was, that was okay. the last countdown, but that's probably my fault because we put them all on the same thing there. But okay. generally, with 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 Bill, it doesn't really matter what clip you're showing because uh, Bill has an extremely distinct style. Um, so distinct, in fact, that it's it's as a when I was a writer writing for him. Now I produce a show on the opposite end of the schedule, but I I, I wrote for him um, for for a long time on all the shows that he's on now. You know, the five six p.m. and the, and the eleven p.m. Um, it's impossible to write for Bill because nobody sounds like Bill. You know, he's, he has such a unique delivery um, and, you know, kind of emphasizes perhaps may, maybe like different facts about a particular story that you might have not thought of on the top of your head. But that's how he got to where he is now is because he, he delivers a story. He tells stories in a way that, you know, just about nobody else can. Um, and uh, I think that that is, to me, at least to me as a, as a news consumer, much more important than whether or not you have the kind of like, you know, traditional technique of like a, 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 an on-air talent. Um, I, I just want somebody who, you know, tells me a captivating story. And with Bill, he's very captivating. And also he seems like he's talking to you at, at you know, like the dinner table. This is like one of the first things we, we learn in TV news, which is just like, you know, make sure you, you keep it as conversational as possible. You don't want to sound, you know, like a robot. Um, and, you know, that is one of those, uh, you know, kind of uh, pieces of advice that has really sustained through my career. It's just really, really, I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but you got to really try hard to just, you know, stick with being yourself. You know, don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be, you know, the, 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 the smoothest sounding, you know, reporter in the world. Just be, be yourself and, um, you know, get a focus on becoming a good storyteller, a captivating storyteller. That's really great. I saw Marcy gave the thumbs up to that as an approval. Anything you wanted to kind of tag on a little bit with that that he was talking about that resonated with you? Yes, I, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, it all resonated, uh, you know, now Bill, Bill Ritter is somebody who's been doing this for a long time and he's got he's such a big personality and he's so good at it that it's a great role model for people to take an, you know to take an, uh, a look at and say wow he looks so comfortable he does look like he's just talking to me as opposed to being Joe TV so you do have to be careful as as Jonathan said not to become a robot and not to be like you know doing the voice of the of the anchor where you look like, you know, it's a parody on Saturday Night Live. So, um, and, and as Rachel said, you know, the creativity of your standups, the smiling, like put in some shots where you're smiling, put in some shots where you're standing knee deep in water covering a hurricane or whatever it is, um, you know, they give, give people a variety of shots and, and some stories where it really looks like you're a good storyteller as, as Jonathan's pointed out. That's great. Thank you so much. And it was which kind of leads me nicely over to Jessica Suarez, who, you know, has to, you know, look at these tapes and has <laughs> to, you know, identify and see the personality. So I'd like to ask you, Jessica, you know, what's it like, you know, as a day when you put an ad out and you're now getting in that flood of videos, emails, look at my YouTube channel, Hundreds. you know, <laughs> like that Hundreds. it's a very, uh, it's a very overwhelming process, um, for sure. And, and kind of, you know, back to what Marcy said about, you know, just probably I watch on average, I watch maybe a minute of, of every, um, you know, reel that, that comes in. And I know, you know, it sounds, it sounds like not that much time when you're making, you know, a, a reel that's maybe, eight or nine minutes long, but you know, it's unfortunately it's even more now with social media and just where we're going with videos and people's attention span. It's, you need to show what you need to show within that first, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, 
you know, whether that be the creative standups or, you know, at their anchor desk real quick, um, introducing a story, anything like that. And, and just to kind of go off the personality as well, a big thing that we um, also looked at too, um, which really I think showcased a lot of the reporters personality was their social media. Um, just to, to go off that too, um, you know, every, pretty much every reel that we liked and that we moved forward with the next question was, okay, how's their social media? Do they, you know, share those videos of stories that they've done? Do they share standups on their social media? Do they try to, you know, do things like that, share videos that is gathering attention because, you know, they're going to be working for us. They're going to be building our social networks. Um, so that's another big important thing. Um, you know, our main anchor, Faith Jesse, um, we brought her over from NBC, NBC Las Vegas. Um, and she is just amazing on social media. Her, I mean, I, ne I never thought I'd be talking about this, but her TikToks, you know, generate so many views. Her her social media, her Instagram is laid out perfectly. Um, she has over 10,000 views, um, you know, so that as much as people, you know, I, and I think that's starting to become part of the conversation is, is a, a big part of it and a big slice of it is how you present yourself on social media. Um, and, um, you know, another point to uh, go off of um, is the importance of, you know, Marcy said, tailoring your reel to what you're applying for. Um, so for example, we've been looking for, um, we were at one point looking for a food host, and then we were also looking for a sports person. So I would have, you know, for the food host, I would have someone who just, you know, loves doing sports, and they would just send me sports videos, um, and vice versa. So, you know, that's, that's very important, because if I press play on a, you know, a, um, a sports anchor and I'm seeing you hosting food videos, I'm going to turn it off right away. So, cause it's just, it's, it's not what I'm looking for. You know, it's not what this position is tailored to. So, you know, that's important when you're doing your internships, you know, when you're on Stony Brook news to try to get a, a diversity of different topics um, to, you know, do packages on and to do stories on. It's just, you know, and I know that, you know, you definitely get the opportunity to do a variety of different things, including, you know, the sports, the weather, but really just make sure that uh, your reels are diverse so that if, you know, an opportunity opportunity comes up that's a little more specialized, you can put those clips first in your video for that specific reel. Um, it's tailored to, and I think Marcy wants to say something. I, I just I, I just wanted to um, tag along on top of that with the resume, because no nobody should have just one resume either. If you're going to have a bunch of different reels, you should have a bunch of different resumes, because to Jessica's point, if you're applying for, you know, a sports job, and your resume is just got blah, 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 you know, news, news, news or whatever, and maybe one bullet that says sports, then why is somebody going to look, you know, harder at you um, so that if you are applying for something specific, tailor that resume, tailor that reel and tailor that cover letter. All of it needs to be about the job that they're looking for. You're, you're, you're trying to fill a need they have, right? The, the, the whole reason people hire somebody is because they have a need. You know, she has a need for a sports person. She has a need for a food person. So this isn't about them looking to help you get the best job in the history of your life. It's about them filling a need. And you have to make sure they know you're the best person to fill that need. Right. And I, and I beg, please double check, triple check before you submit the resume that it's going to the right company, that it's going for the right position, because I can't tell you how many times we pass up on a good candidate because they, you know, send in their resume or they send in their reel. And it says, you know, I want to be part of NBC because X, Y, and Z. And, you know, obviously we're not NBC and it's, you know, little things like that, that, you know, it seems so simple, but I, promise you so many people make those mistakes so double triple check what you're sending in before you send it in um you know that's that's a big deal too yeah especially because it's different now i mean you know way back you know in 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 in, in the olden days we used to have to physically mail resumes so you've had that kind of minute or two to check to make sure it was properly done and right before you did it it is so easy to click send 
on these things, especially when you get, um, you know, a, a bunch of things you want to do and you get a little bit anxious about it. it it's so important to just be patient. And I, I want to go, Professor Selvin, actually, why I want to tag on to that, please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that what you're saying now about tailoring things is the key. It's what I say all the time, I, you know, when I'm advising students with resumes, so important. Uh, look at the wording of the job description and respond to it. You know, if they say they want Microsoft Word, make sure that shows up on your resume. It may seem obvious. Everybody knows Microsoft Word, et cetera. And many of you have gone through this with me individually. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was as far as what Jessica was just saying about mistakes, get somebody else to look at it. We all know that we see what we have in our heads when we're looking at something we've written get somebody else to look at it. Am I sending this to Newsday? It doesn't say Newsday. Is there some other thing at the bottom that I missed? You know, it, it happens all the time. So another set of eyes is a really, really good strategy. Definitely. And, and to add on to that in the reels too, I mean, have other people watch your reels um, for little things, even just like presentation, you know, you'll, you may be wearing something that you think is presentable and you know, it's, you miss one thing, you miss your shirt is untucked or you know, things that, cause you've looked at it so many times you can overlook the little things. And the little things are what can be so important as to why I choose the other person over you. You know, it's because they paid attention to the little details. So even if, you know, somebody who's maybe you don't feel as, as qualified as, you know, to watch your resume, just have them watch it anyway, because the average consumer will pick up on little things like that, that you don't even realize. So I think that's that's also important to add. And, and let me just tag off to that. Watch, watch the outlet, watch the output of whatever outlet you're applying for so that you can get a sense of the style of the different reporters, the anchors, do they have a very relaxed kind of very, you know, congenial style? Is it more formal? Just get an idea, not only so that you can, you know, see for yourself, but when you are going to be interviewed, if you get that far, now you're going to be able to refer to people you saw on their channel, pieces you saw, stories you saw, and you can refer to it as, as Jonathan was talking about the storytelling, you can actually refer to a reporter who did a great story on Thursday night kind of thing. So again, people want you to be engaged with their outlet if you're applying for a job at their outlet. And if I could just add to that too, um, with this whole, like making sure double checking and whatnot, there are a lot of Facebook groups with young reporters, with experienced reporters who can also help you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm part of, we're interviewing at my job right now too. And half of the reels that I send to um, my news director is from these Facebook groups, um, which is not only a great way to just get feedback on your current work experience, but also to get recognized by different outlets and get recruited that way. Um, and there's there's so many of them. I can send a list to you to Barbara and she can send them out if, if, if you like. Um, because you're then you're just not only networking, but you're in you're getting the same feedback from people in the same boat as you. And you also have these outside eyes now. It's not your professor looking at this or it's not alumni looking at this. It's people who have no idea who you are and can really tell you if your personality is coming through, if your, you know, your voice is coming through, so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, kind of like what Marcy was saying, this kind of goes into more interviewing, but yeah, know the company that you're applying for and be able to recognize it and uh, attribute different stories. Um, I know for me, when I was interviewing at different outlets, like I had three stories that they did from like that week that I could bring up recognize, say that, oh, I did this in my reel, or I can do this now, because um, they want to see that, like, I want to say a lot of the reporters that you're going to work with are very much like you, but I know from my experience, every single reporter that I look, I, I work with is very much like me. We have the same kind of style with these different little things, but I realized too, we all fit under this one umbrella of what the company represents, um, so it's really important to kind of make sure that you're matching that. And unfortunately, like not to compare us to like, we all have to fit into this one stereotype. Um, but at the same time, that's kind of what you're trying to check off the list of all of these things that you fit or that you can do and that your company wants to, um, you know, help gr you grow with. I think Excellent. if I could just uh, tell a personal story real quick to bounce off of that. Um, I think that with my, my first internship was with uh, News 12 and, um, 
I was interning for um, a specific role. It's it was to be um, to it was a morning position, a morning internship with Elizabeth Hassagan, who was the morning um, anchor over at News 12. And um, I knew that going into the the interview. So I had um, you know looked at stories she did, looked at packages she did. And one patch, package specifically spoke out to me. It was an Earth Day one. And, you know, just the graphics in it, everything really spoke to me. And I was, you know, I admired that package so much. So when I was talking to her, you know, I brought up that package and I brought up a few other ones, stories that she had done um, recently. And um, she told me later on, you know, I, I, after I got the internship, she's like, you know, Jessica, she's like, I spoke to so many students and not one of them brought up something that I've done. Not one of them. She's like, that just really, she's like, that was one of the reasons I went with you. That was, you know, why you stood out because you took that time to, to, you know, do the research and to, you know, see, um, you know, that really made you stand out compared to other applicants because it shows that you, you care. You're really interested in the job. You're really interested in the company you're applying for, the person you're applying for. Um, so that, that, background is so key and it'll help make you stand out that's excellent yeah, there's point. no there you should never go into an interview and say you're going to wing it you know that you got it you got before you have an interview man you have got to study like you're studying for an exam study that outlet study those stories make sure you remember you know which ones she did refer to them in the interview because you know you can't just go in there and then somebody says who's your favorite reporter on W, you know, X, Y, Z, and you don't even know the name of any, you know, you're dead in the water. Think of it as if you were going to go do your own story, right? You don't just go in, you don't just pitch a story and then go into it blind. You prepare yourself, you know, the questions you're going to ask, you know, the person's background, right? You want to, same thing with this. You always want to be prepared um, because at the end of the day, while your resume could be amazing, top notch, and your GPA can be a 4.0, whatever, no one's really going to care about that and if you're lying and you're trying to say that you know something that you really don't or that you you clearly don't care about um, the company that you want to work for. And I know it, I remember when I was applying, like, it's a lot. It definitely seems overwhelming too, because I would have, you know, like a page of notes going into interviews and whatnot um, for each company that I was interviewing with. And it's a lot, but you have to remember, this is your future. This is what's going to set you um, above other people and make you stand out because, you, it's great if you get one offer. It's great if you get 10 offers. Um, it's harder to choose from those 10 offers, but you want to make sure you have options um, going into your field because you don't just want to get the first job and take it um, because that's what's given to you. You want to have options and doing that will help you doing those things to prepare yourself interview will only help make you a better person, make you a better interviewer too, or interviewee, I should say. Um, so just always prepare, always prepare. Don't go in blind. <laughs> and, that, and that key phrase you said was stand out. You know, the whole point here is to, is to stand out. Like why, you know, we used to do this in this, in Stony Brook, in, in the classes, why me? Why should you hire me? You know, I'll tell you why you should hire me. You should hire me because, so you've got to, You've got to figure out those reasons why you stand out and exactly what Rachel was just saying. Now, uh, Matthew, I think you had a point you wanted to try to make as well, uh, kind of tag along to this. What, 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 what do you have? Well, um, what I was saying, uh, just to add to what you were saying about making sure you send the resume to the right place is also make sure there are no typos. Uh, <laughs> because I've also, I've looked at resumes with typos in it. Uh, one tip that I would give you, which is what we use when, like if we're doing a lot of text on screen in order to fact, you know, to check that text, make sure there's no, read it backwards. Yeah. Read it backwards, start at the end and read it all the way to the beginning. And because if you're reading it forwards, if you might just, you know, glaze over it, but read it backwards and then your mind somehow seems to pick it up uh, better. So just a, just a little tip there. Yeah. That's excellent. Thank you very much too. Because it, it can, it's very hard to see you know, the forest through the trees, I guess, it's sometimes, especially when you're working on so many resumes, it could blur to you uh, what real is what. And so it's very important to kind of just take a breath, look at it and have other people give that feedback is, is really important to have that fresh pair of eyes, we call it, right? You know, one that hasn't seen your work could look at it objectively, even though if they may not be a part of that field you're going for, they can at least maybe see something that you don't. I, I think that's really, really important too. Um, I just want to go down to Joe. Um, I talk a little bit about 
okay, how do you put together a reel? You know, what tools do you use? You know, maybe you don't have the Adobe Premiere at your home to do things, you know? So Joe, can you give us a little bit of insight about some tools that students could use if they don't have access to what's traditionally maybe more expensive programs? And, you know, uh, how can they acquire in, in, in that regard too? So Joe, why don't you go take it from there? Awesome. So thank you guys for having me. And as you saw in the introduction, I'm in a little bit of a different field than everyone else here. Um, but in the police department, I do a lot of work with live streaming and video production. And before the, and on the side, I also do freelance phot photography, videography. I do some stuff for the Mets and a bunch of other things. It's important, like everyone else has been mentioning, to have multiple reels. Um, with the pandemic, live streaming has become much, much bigger of a business for me. I put together a um, reel of some of the live streams I've worked on. And just off that reel and off my website, another thing, having a website, I know it's a little side thing, huge. Um, just off my reel on my website, I've booked three different wedding live streams um, jobs. So people are looking for your stuff. People will see it. Um, website's huge, but in terms of the tech to, to actually put this together when you don't have a huge budget. So, um, if you don't have say the, the greatest computer and a premier subscription and whatnot, if say you have just an iPad there's apps called Luma fusion, and there's a couple other ones. You can even do an iMovie. You don't need for, for these kind of reels, you don't need the fanciest software. You don't need the crazy music subscriptions, the music beds and all these layers. Sometimes the, the best thing to do is keep it simple. You, you don't want to go crazy with it. Um, I'll link in the chat a couple of the programs that you can use for free or, or pretty low cost to be able to, to produce this. And when you actually put your reel together, you want it to look good. You, you want to make sure you're using shots that are composed well. Um, you want to make sure you're in focus. I know um, I helped out with a 490 project a couple of semesters ago. And the students tried very hard. They, it was, it was with, the, with, with the pandemic. Um, a couple of the videos that I saw at the end, though, some of the shots, the stand-ups, they, 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 the horizons were a little crooked. Make sure you're using well-composed shots because I've seen a bunch of reels when, when we've been trying to bring people into my unit to do to do stuff with me. If if I see is someone who's looking at this stuff, if I see someone who's out of focus, it's crooked. It's that it's it's okay. I'm not I'm not watching this. If you want to make sure your stuff looks good too. And I'm also looking at this from another perspective. Uh, I know most of you here want to be reporters, but there's people who are going to be doing editing, um, like Matthew's talking about. There's going to be photographers. Um, there's other types of reels that you want to put. make sure you're putting forward what you want to be working in. As a photographer, I'm not going to put a stand-up of myself in J-School in that. Um, I want to put my best-looking shots that I've put together um, the B roll, the you could, you could put a package in there that you've shot that you've worked. Cause sometimes, um, the photographer will work very closely with a reporter on a story and carry it through. I know working with the police department in DCPI, we have reporters that we work very closely with and they have specific photographers they'll work on a whole story with over the course of a couple of weeks. So if, if you're a photographer in that situation, yeah, I, I, you could include something like that. You want to put your best work forward and um in the chat i'll link some of the, the the free or low cost programs i would say are good to use but it's also worth noting uh subscription to premiere um you can get it on a student discount for about twenty dollars a month and a dirty little secret that i still use today at the end of your subscription when it's about to expire you call them and you say, I, I, can't, I can't really afford this anymore. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll put you on the student discount again. So I've been on the student deal for the past six years. So um, same. It, complete it's, same. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a dirty little secret that a lot of people don't know about. But when you don't make that much, you need, you need every little uh, thing you can get. So if you want a premiere subscription, that's a great way of doing it. And speaking of like Premiere and Adobe, Adobe Rush is a great program that you could edit video on pretty quickly. 
and it looks really nice for very fast turnaround projects um i will take the video on my camera send it right to my phone edit it on adobe rush and have it out within 15 minutes so there's yep. there's a couple of really good programs you could use that I'll, I'll link in the chat that's great advice thanks joe because you know we're talking about multiple reels different things get seem overwhelming like man i'm gonna have to take like seven hours of my day to make you know or the whole week to make three different reels can get overwhelming but seeing from joe you know there's not much it, things work so quickly in the digital era you know phones are way more powerful than any computer i had growing up if, if, you know there's so much you can do so if i can lot, one, one go more ahead, thing joe. phil yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead kind of piggybacking off what rachel said earlier yes um keep your shots whatever i always i've told the students when i worked in 490 i tell everyone i work with now i tell everyone who will listen when you're shooting something you want it saved multiple places you want to save on the cloud, on an external hard drive, on another external hard drive somewhere else, because you don't want to lose your work. If you shoot an amazing package, I actually had this happen to me when I was in Stony Brook. I shot a great package, loved it. I forgot where I put the hard drive and it's gone in the ether somewhere. So you want multiple things saved in, in, in different places. And I actually have a folder on every single drive I have so I have this in like 10 different places of my best photography that, that I save. So like when I work with the Mets every year, I maybe have five or six shots that I absolutely love what I'm doing with the police department. There's usually about 10 photos I take a year that I absolutely love the same thing with video. And I have these saved in like my super save folder on every drive I own and in the cloud so that I always have access to it. And I have my Adobe premiere file for my reel saved with all of this too. So I can open it anywhere I am to make sure that I have everything saved in the same spot. Cause you, the worst thing you can happen is you have 10 different hard drives and like, oh, I need this one clip that I really love. I don't know which hard drive it's on. I don't know where it is. Being organized is the key to being able to put this together in an effective way. Cause the editing itself isn't that hard. It's knowing which shots to include and remembering where you stored it. Just to add off that that personal experience, I had a hard drive. I, I completely agree. Save everything on an external hard drive. Please get one. Please have two. Have a backup. When I was a junior at Stony Brook, I going into my senior year, I had one external hard drive. The last five years of my life on it, all of my work. I went to South Korea, dropped the hard drive, and lost all of that work. And I didn't have it saved anywhere else. Um, and it was uh, everything I worked on in college, everything I did from high school, all of my internship st st stuff. I have called about five companies to try and fix it. It's this one right here. Um, this is, I still have it to this day in case I ever come across somebody who can fix it. They can't. But um, the hard drive that I recommend, I love this one. It's called My Passport. I get, um, this is a four terabyte one. I highly recommend you guys having a one terabyte or more um, because you will save it up quickly. Yeah, that's a good one that Matt is showing as well. Um, that one's my brother has that one. I like these ones. They work with Windows, Mac. Um, I have one at work. I have two at home. I have another one just lying around in case I ever need it. Highly recommend it. Save your stuff. Don't be me. Don't lose all of your work. From you know what? One, one, it, would be, it, would be, it would be great if you guys put the names of those in the chat so that the students can um, remember them. So if, if Matt and, and Rachel and, and Joe could put anything like that in the chat so that people know, oh, okay, I want to buy this exact thing. It They're might not be that expensive. Um, some of them, the larger ones are more expensive. I think I paid probably like $100 for four terabyte. Not awful. Again, it's worth it in the end. So I highly recommend this, I have this. This is just what I have in my backpack. I have three that I carry with me. Um, I always recommend solid state hard drives because if you, if I drop this, it won't break. When you have a spinning disc drive and you drop it, if that disc gets damaged or scratched, your information's gone. Another option um, that you could have, I mean, the solid state drives are a little um, more expensive, but totally worth the investment. Another option you could have, which is another thing that I have that I have here at work is I have a, I have a network attached storage. So I have a 60 terabyte um, unit here that you can set up in a, what's called raids. And so if I lose one of these hard drives, I have six hard drives in here. I have six 10 terabyte drives. If one of them breaks, 
there's redundant information on the other drive so that I don't lose anything. And that's attached to the internet. So my drive here in Manhattan, if I'm, if I'm at home and my boss calls me, he's like, I really need this shot. I can go on my phone, download it and send it. Um, they make more affordable versions of that also. Um, there's, a, there's a ton of different ways you can store your stuff, but just bottom line, store your stuff, multiple different locations. That's the best way you could possibly do it. You know, and everybody talks about this. And I'm telling you, I can't agree with everybody more. I mean, these, when you have the feeling of not being able to find that perfect clip that you use for a job that you want to apply for, you never want to have that feeling again. It's very similar to going off on a shoot and forgetting to hit the record button. You only do those things once. After that, you never do it again. So heed this warning while you still have the chance we could still save you from this, uh, it, which is going to happen. So please keep that in mind as well. So now with this great information that we've gotten for this past hour, I'd love to turn it over to the students who are here and what they have as well. I think I saw James had a question you'd like to go to, but I really want to open to the students. We know what it is, is it? What are you concerned about? How do you, what do you want to know about looking for a job? These are some great minds you've heard for the past hour. Please let's hear your questions. Go on ahead. Alrighty, so my first question is, I'm going for a bilingual reel, which I like to toss it from English to Spanish on occasion, but I've heard that the, like, English outlets don't really care about the Spanish part, and the Spanish outlets don't really care about the English part, so my question to you in general is, should I have two reels, or do you think it works with the back and forth English and Spanish? Um, I can I answer think that, Marcy. Yeah, go ahead, Marcy. I was going to say it depends where you're applying. I mean, if you're applying to a job in Miami, um, you know, they're going to care if you can speak Spanish. And so it would be wise to, to include it. If you're applying for a job in, you know, Des Moines, it might not be so, you know, obvious. I mean, it's obvious that they might not care that much. Um, Rachel, what were you going to say? Yeah, no, um, James, we've kind of talked about this before too. Um, I think it's important to separate them extremely because I mean, from kind of, I know you're applying to like Telemundo and whatnot. Um, personally, they obviously want to see you speaking Spanish. Also, if they want to see you speaking English, they'll ask for a reel in English. Um, it's the same thing with, you know, if you have an anchor reel and a reporter reel, if you submit your reporter reel and they want to see your anchor stuff, they'll ask for it. Um, and I know, cause I know you've done weather. I know you've done Spanish. I know you've done English, separate all of them. Um, Personally, if I was, and I, I mean, I am doing this now as we're, we're recruiting more reporters. For me, if I see a reporter put their weather stuff in their MMJ reel, I don't care. Um, I skip right over it because that's not what I need. That's not what I'm looking for. And I automatically say no to them. Um, and so you kind of going off it, like, like Marcy and like Jess, everyone is saying, you only have really about 30 seconds to a minute to really showcase who you are and what you do. If you are taking that time to, let's say you're doing your Spanish, you're submitting for a Spanish uh, reporting job. If you take your time, that 30 seconds, and you have a few clips of you English, well, you're only now are giving them uh, 15 seconds to show your stuff, show what you can do in Spanish. Um, separate it. Like I said, if they want more, they will ask for more. Trust me. I've been asked that question many times. Um, keep it separate and keep it simple as well. Yeah. Know your audience, know your audience, you know. Great question. Anybody else with that one about reels um, in, in different language? Nope. Okay. Well, go ahead, Hi. Jess. Um, no, I 100% I agree with what Marcy and Rachel have said. You know, I think it's important to keep it separate because if, if they want to, you know, see that they, they will look at it, you know, but I think it's definitely something that you do want to include. Um, you know, I think that diversity is important now um, and that would make you stand out. Um, you know, um, having that. Um, so it's definitely something that you can, you know, throw in there. It's not guaranteed they're going to look at it or even want it, but I don't think it, you know, hurts to, to add it in. Um, yeah, I think sometimes with depending on your application, um, I know a few, the ones that I was applying for, a few of them had like submit your resume reel and then it said any additional links. You can just put in additional links if you want. Um, again, they may look at it, they might not. Um, but yeah. 
yeah, definitely can't hurt to, like Rachel said, throw it in that additional links, you know. Um, if, if, if you don't have that option, then just don't include it. And if, like Rachel said, if they want it, they'll ask for it. Excellent. Thank you very much. More questions, please. Anybody? Go ahead. Um, I had a question. So um, I guess like the past couple of years at Stony Brook, I've been very print heavy, but my goal is to be in broadcast. I've done like whatever I could in classes and stuff, but now I see like I'm missing a lot of standups. So um, I was making my reel like this week. And then um, I realized just a lot of my clips are interview based. So it's me asking um, a source a question and them responding. So do we, if we include, you know, ourselves like asking a question in the reel, how long should we include the source speaking, you know, or should we even include them? So I did that for my reel actually, uh, cause I was kind of in the same boat. Um, and I, I have my original reel if you want me to play Phil. <laughs> Um, but basically I, I kind of had the same thing. I only had maybe about five standups or so, which isn't bad actually, um, for what it was, but I included, um, me interviewing, I want to say it was for midterm elections, something like that, um, with me at the anchor desk interviewing. I asked my question. I kind of had a little bit of a talk back with the guy and then I let him answer maybe for five seconds and I moved on. Um, I wouldn't put it at the beginning of your reel. I would put it more so middle, maybe end. Um, because for me personally, looking back at that, I don't think it was a bad idea to do that because it could show how I am in the field or what I would be like if I was doing a live hit. Um, at the same time though, uh, it depends Again, that first 15, 30 seconds, you just want it to be you. You want to, you want also to, I guess, a point to make, um, I was always told to your first shot shouldn't be one of your creative shots. It should be you on camera because they want to see your face. They want to see the way that you can project yourself um, and make it like your best just on camera. So you can, basically it's an introduction of yourself. Um, and you move forward onto that. So for interviewing, maybe put it before one of your packages maybe let that be one of your last couple of shots. Um, and if you have, I wouldn't include too many of them, two tops maybe. Um, and as long as, and make them diverse, don't make them being the, the exact same thing essentially. No, my actually brings a very good point, you know, and kind of, we're now kind of, uh, can I say coming out of COVID yet? Or is that too, still too early to say? You know, a lot of times students just have not had the opportunity to have that first shot that people are now looking for moving forward because closed down schools, equipment was not there at the time and now they're starting to graduate and now they might need that shot, you know, and maybe they weren't able to get as part of a class. So let me ask the panel and, and ask, and Maya correct me if, if I'm wrong on this too, you know, um, is it okay? So, you know what, I don't have that. I'm gonna go out and shoot it. You know, I don't have that story or me in this kind of position let me go out there and do it, you know, even though it's not part of a class technically. How do you feel about that? I was I was actually going to bring up that point, Phil, you know, okay. be go out there, make your own stuff. If you don't have it, you know, there's there's a whole world of potential out there. You know, um, if you you know, maybe there's a protest, you know, that's going to be happening or you can look for local events. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be part of a class or part of a project to, you know, make it onto your reel. Um, you know, if you, if you have the opportunity to go out and to, you know, report and shoot on your own, um, definitely take advantage of that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, just as crucial. It's, it's, better to have that than to have nothing at all, you know, um, to show that you made the effort to go out and to go to a local event or a local protest and, and report from there, um, then, you know, have, have nothing or, you know, might ha have someone else talking or something like that. So I, I was going to uh, actually bring up that point, Bill. You know, uh, well, I, can go I, ahead, I, I would just like to echo what Jessica has just said. I mean, it shows you know, it, it shows that you've got some, um, you know, you've got what it takes. I mean, if you, if you want to be a reporter, then get out there and do some reporting. I mean, just get out there, even though you don't have an outlet to give it to yet, maybe you can get that outlet to News 12. Maybe you can get that outlet, I mean, that, that piece somewhere. But if there's news happening, all this COVID stuff, people online waiting to get shots, people afraid to get shots, all that stuff, you could be shooting pieces 
right now, do a, do your own stand up, and and then you have this opportunity in an interview to say, you know, I didn't have a class to do this for, but I love it so much that I just do it. It's like I practice my trade. If I was a piano player, I'd be practicing no matter what. I'm a reporter. I'm going to practice, and so I would encourage you absolutely, um, as Jessica said, get out get out there and do it. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. I had, can I add something to that too? Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Just echoing, echoing this. Um, you can go out there. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need anything to really do this. You really can do this on your phone. Um, I'm putting together a class for kids in East New York right now about producing um, short films that we're actually going to do a film festival on. And I'm just having them shoot it straight on their phones. I would recommend getting a little microphone. Um, you, get a little, you can get a little wireless lav, pretty cheap. And you could shoot the whole thing on your phone, edit it on your phone, everything. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need a, a Sennheiser Live. You don't need a teleprompter. You can do this on your cell phone. And I feel like a lot of people kind of see it as a less professional um, thing. But it, when the majority of people looking at this is going to be on YouTube or something like that, YouTube is going to compress the hell out of your footage. I shoot um, on a Sony FX6 a lot of the times in 4K and 10 bit. I'm shooting like 10 minutes of footage is one terabyte. Like it's, it's nuts. You put it on YouTube, it's compressed the same as everyone else's. It doesn't matter what you shoot on. If you shoot a great looking piece of video on your phone, it's still a great looking piece of video. Um, get out there and just do it. I linked in the description, a, uh, well, the chat, um, a great app called Filmic Pro. I've used this to, to capture really, really high quality footage on your cell phone. You could, if, if any of you are inclined to editing and know about color grading, you could shoot 10 bit footage on your phone. Now it's insane. Um, but just get out there and do it and always shoot horizontal, not vertical. That's the only <laughs> thing I'd say on a phone horizontal. And on top of that too, it's like my, I know, I mean, from my experience, like we got so, we pitched so many stories within the last four years. I know I didn't get to do all the stories I pitched. What says that you can't go do them now? You know, you don't need a professor to approve what you're doing or what you're not doing. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's your work. Even that too, like, and I still do this now. Um, I'll go shoot standups that I'm not even doing a story for um, to go practice creativity and just maybe, maybe I have an idea in my head that I want to do for a future story. Um, I go out and practice it because I know in the amount of time that I have to turn a story, I probably won't, if I do it the first time, I probably won't have enough time to practice it. Go out and shoot those stories. Um, I know a lot of people from my remembering what it was like being student, student journalists, like a lot of people would ask us like, Oh, well, where is this going? Where is this publishing from? Just say that you're doing it for your portfolio. They should allow that. You know, it's still going online. They're still getting that. You're sharing it on social media and that if you want to submit it to freelance places, you can. Um, biggest thing too with this pandemic, um, I know a lot of people still have not found jobs. And I know it's some graduates from 2019 still have not found jobs. Do not stop reporting just because you don't have a job. Because the biggest thing that one of the people we're looking at hiring right now, she, it's taken her a year and a half to get a job. And her reel isn't just stuff from college. It's stuff that's from the pandemic and Black Lives Matter movements and stuff like that. And it's showing us, hey, she didn't sit around and just do nothing while applying to jobs. She got out there and she's doing things. She's taking the initiative to do it. So you know, from the day you graduate to the day that you get that first job, just never stop asking those questions um, because you will fall out of practice 100%. And um, you'll just, you know, keep building your reel. There's no harm in doing some extra stuff. So, you know. You need, you're just as Rachel, you are so spot on, like keeping that reel relevant. You know, if you have nothing on that reel that has anything to do with COVID, like they're going to say, where the heck were you for the past where year? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And also to um, going off that, I know uh, because some of the standups you are doing masks, try and get some standups without masks as well. Um, because again, people want to see your face. Um, one of the reels that we just got, literally he 
like the all of his stand-ups are in masks. I have no idea what his face looks like. Um, that's really hard to see how a person comes off on camera um, when you can't see their smile, when you can't see their facial expressions besides their eyes. So have COVID stuff on there, definitely. But if you can get a few without masks, get a few without masks. Um, yeah. yeah. Shoot, shoot your shoot your stand-ups both ways. If you have to wear a mask, then shoot it a second time without the mask. Yeah, certainly. Absolutely. I think Matthew wanted to tag on to uh, Maya's original comment. Go ahead, Matthew, please. Uh, um, just Maya, what you had said, um, your first comment was about asking, um, you know, should you put in reaction of the person you're speaking with? So I've edited a million of these reels over the years for people in different and, and one thing that a lot of the reporters that I've uh, edited for have told me is, I don't want so much video of so-and-so I don't want people to get distracted by them. I want them to see me. So that's you know a bit of advice I would give you is definitely show the interaction, but you know focus on Maya Brown. Don't focus on anybody else. Just you know you ask those questions, you belt it out as good as you can, and then let them give a little you know re little response and then move on. Um, you know the the people who I've edited for have. You know, been in entertainment a lot of the time, and you know the, the red carpet questions are asking these huge stars, and you know the fear was that people would would see these huge stars and just get distracted and not see who they are and what they can offer. So that's just a bit of advice I would give you to you know focus on you. Don't worry about them um, as much. You know, give a little bit, but more so focus on yourself. Maya, I can send you what I did for my original reel, kind of show exactly what Matt's talking about, show you interviewing and then maybe like two seconds of them answering and moving on. So I'll send you that. Right, excellent. Okay, we've got a couple of people who've raised their hands. So first we'll go with uh, Jocelyn, then, then Ray right afterwards. Jocelyn, go ahead. Yeah, so what Matt was saying about um, you don't want to distract people, you know, focus on one thing, you want them to focus on you. That actually made me think about how I do have a couple of features. And what if what if you have um, a segment where you have someone, let's say at the green screen and then they throw it off to you. Do you wanna have that specific, um, that transition in, in your reel or do you, should it just be the moment you start speaking? I, I would say yes. I mean, you, you definitely wanna see the interaction, like I said. But you don't want it to be, you know, and the weather today on Long Island was 75 degrees, on and on and on. And now let's go to Jocelyn Cruz. You know, you want it to be, and now let's go to Jocelyn Cruz and go to Jocelyn Cruz because that's you. You know, you don't want to, you know, give a, a shout out to this weather guy or whoever tossing to you on, you know, on screen. You know, it's all about you. Um, that's that's what I would say. And if you're going to toss from someone to you, make sure that's not at the top of your reel. Do your thing first, then add that in later. Because again, focus on you, highlight you. And then we can say, and now let's see some interaction between me and whoever the weather guy. Um, and that's what I recommend. But yes, a little bit, you know, and now we go to Jocelyn Cruz with this amazing story, go. That's all. That's a great way to transition actually to something. So for, for me, I have that transitioning into all my live hits. So my, the first like 15 seconds are all standups and whatnot. And then the way that I transition to my live is we have a live stinger and our, our anchor will throw to me. So how I let the news director, recruiter, whoever is watching the reel know that, hey, this is her live portion now. I will always include, oh, and Rachel Eiler joins us now from wherever, live from wherever, new singer up, boom, right into that. And it's my first, it's just a good little transition piece. Um, I did the same with my anchor reel as well on one of them. I have, uh, I broke, I transitioned into my anchor part by um, ca the calling of the election actually. So we had our election graphic come up and said, breaking news tonight, Joe Biden is now the 45th 46th president elect, um, you know, the United States. Good way to transition um, with your specific reel. Um, you know, it really depends on I on my reel from graduating. I did include my anchor stuff because I didn't really know what jobs I was applying for. Originally, I wasn't going to go into TV, so I kind of didn't really put that much effort into my reel. Um, so uh, again, probably a mistake on my part. But um, so yeah, so let them act as transition pieces, essentially. 
Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we've got uh, Ray, then it'll be Audrey right after Ray. Ray, go ahead, please. Uh, yes. Can you guys um, talk a little bit more about people that are, are looking to become a photographer or an editor and what their reels to look like? I guess that's uh, directed towards me. Um, so in my reel, um, it's a lot of the... It, I have different scenes in there. You don't want to just have one specific shot of one shot of this, one shot of that. You do want to kind of tie it into a story. And because I'm not on camera, I'm not specifically saying anything, talking to the camera. I actually have music in mind and I kind of edited it to um, the song that I chose and it, it works. I show my police work. I've shown my drone work. I have shown some of my, um, more documentary style work. Um, I'm pretty currently making another one that's for my live streaming work, um, which is a little different still, but you want to show your best stuff. You want to show what, what you worked on. You want to tell a story with it. So in my reel, I kind of have many stories kind of built into it. You want to have an arc in there. You want to have three or four shots that tie together. And then maybe there's something in there that can kind of bring it to the next part so in, in my particular one and i'll send it to you um the song there, there's a there's a drop in it where the chorus comes in and that kind of ushers in to a more fast-paced stuff where i'm actually in um a police rmp doing doing like uh responding to a job and you see the sirens going and you see all this you see some like the with that you want to have it kind of built together so that you can show the different the different styles of work you do I don't know if that, so if that makes sense. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. So it's, it's kind of like um, action based as in like you're showing the uh, shots of things that you have and uh, that you, like you're telling a story with um, different shots, um, like yes. a montage. Yes, it's because yeah. as a photographer, you don't have that, that voiceover to put in. You, you're not gonna put a, your voiceover in there like, and this shot, I was doing this. You're, you're not gonna really do that. At least, at least mm -hmm. I didn't, I've never seen someone do that. Um, so you need the shots to stand on their own. I also did sound design in mine. So, um, my drone shots, for instance, um, drones don't have a, a mic. And if they did, you would never use that audio. Um, I actually incorporated sound design, sound effects, and, and I, and it, it kind of create, brought it to life a little bit more because like, a, like a lot of people say audio is the most important part of video. If your audio is terrible, people aren't going to watch um and that goes for everything even for all of this stuff if you have to sound good too like the audio quality has to be good because the worst thing you could happen is you put some, you put headphones on you listen to something the audio you can barely hear it or it sounds weird people will turn it off so with photographers it's a little bit more complicated because we don't have that audio track that that vocals to put under it we kind of have to make our own sound there um, so NAT sounds important. You want to, if you don't have the NAT sound or it's not good NAT sound, you can, in your reel, you could do some sound design with it, depending on what you're working on. Um, and one more thing I wanted to touch on, which I don't know if it was really brought up here is your social media accounts too. I work with a lot of reporters in the New York area and especially my friends from, from news 12, they actually get a report card every quarter with their social media status. So they have to post a certain number of stuff per day, per week, at certain amounts of engagement, like they have goals and they get, they get ranked. So they get like, a, they get real report cards, like ABC, like they get all this stuff. You want to make sure your social media accounts, you're, when you're doing that, going out there and doing reporting, you want to show what you're doing. You want to show that you're savvy on this because social media is huge. And if you're not savvy with it, your, your potential employers are going to look at that. They're going to look at what you do on social media and they're going to look at like, are you sharing your stuff? Do you have zero followers? Do you not know what you're doing on it? That, that's something they will look at at some point also. Now, I just want to talk to Matthew. Do you want to talk a little bit about editing as well? Um, well yeah, that's what, I, that's what I wanted to, uh, you know, there's another uh, bit of terminology, which I'm sure, Joe, you, you, know, you would uh, agree. It's called a sizzle reel. And that's something where as opposed to just a, a regular uh, resume reel, so to speak, the sizzle reel goes a lot more with the images, let's say, and, um, you know, for people who edit, uh, granted, I've been at CNN now for almost 26 years. So it was me and Fred Flintstone way back. But, um, you know, it was a long time ago. But you want to be able to um, showcase your video 
even when you don't have that sound. So you have to sometimes use a little bit of a music bed um, or some type of sound design like Joe was talking about um, to, to bring it all together. Um, and again, you don't wanna just show like, you know, and this is a great shot of a stream I took. You don't wanna put anybody to sleep. So you wanna make sure that you have some good stuff in there and that it moves, you know, that it moves along, you know, and you know, this is, you know, Raymond Wilson, editor, producer, boom, you know, hit it hard, go for the good stuff you're gonna do. You know, look for those packages, look for those transitions that you did that look nice. Um, you know, anything you've done, maybe if you, I don't know if you use After Effects or anything like that to kind of, you know, bring it together. Um, grab some, you know, some hard hitting music, uh, you know, from one of those, you know, can music sites. Um, bring it together again, sizzle reel. Think of it, you know, two minutes, let's say, of your best, you know, most hard hitting stuff. And, you know, again, put it forward, you know, and drop a slate at the top, you know, Raymond Wilson, editor, producer, um, you know, whatever it is, your phone number, your address. That's another thing. Uh, make sure you put your information at the top of these resume reels so that uh, the thousands of reels that, you know, people like uh, Jessica are looking at, uh, they will know who you are. Uh, because that's very important if they watch a reel and they say, wow, this is great. Who was that again? Yeah. Make sure that you put it at the top, at the bottom, and then all your good stuff in between. But again, sizzle. You know, think of that in your head. Sizzle reel. What's going to grab the person in, catch them, and not let them go for those two minutes, hopefully, you know, to, to bring in, you know, even if you don't have, let's say, you know, the beautiful, you know, sound to go along with what you've cut or what you've shot. You know, keep that in mind. If it so makes it you. easy, Phil, I just emailed you uh, my reel. It's like the, my old one. It's like two minutes. Um, if you want to show like a first couple minutes, couple seconds of that to kind of show what we were kind of talking about there. I'm, I'm muted. Sure, I'll, I'll go cue that up. But I want to make sure I got Marcia, you had your hand raised about something first. Yeah, to go I, on just that? Wanted, I just wanted to, I, I, I like the idea. I like the scissor reel. I like everybody's suggestions. One thing I just want to make sure, Raymond, that you're, that, that, you're aware of you're whoever you're applying to if you're applying to a hard news organization you want to make sure that you're real if it's a sizzle wheel and you've got music behind it because it's fast editing and, and it's obvious that that you've added this music that's one thing but what you don't want to do is add audio that makes it look like you were somewhere getting real audio when you weren't because if, if it's a you know you, you don't want to misrepresent that so in other words say you're at a you know, you were at a, a, a rally and you, your camera malfunctioned, you didn't get any good audio. I would hesitate to put in audio from some other rally that you were at and put that audio over the rally that you mixed, messed up. So just be aware of new standards for news organizations. And when you're putting together a scissor wheel and you, and you put it to music, that's one thing, but just be careful not to misrepresent audio in a news story that you didn't actually capture. Right. Excellent. And, Thank you. Yeah, that's really, really important too, because I think we've had like, you know, where is that line too? Because remember, you're not just applying for a job that's in a narrative thing where you make things up. You're, it's still news in the end. So it has to be told in truth too. I think that's a very important point. Um, I'll just play a little clip of Joe's um, sizzle reel so you get an idea what we mean by the word sizzle. I'll, I'm just going to play it real quickly and then we'll go to Audrey's question right after that. Okay. Hold on one quick second. Let me do my share. Oops. Okay, and here's a little bit of Joe's um, video reels. Just a quick look at what we're talking about. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. That drop I talked about is coming Try up in a second. That 
That's probably good. Let's show it that now. Okay. Very good. Okay, so I think that makes sense. But this is really does anybody want to add to that? That was great. That was so much cooler than like reporter reels. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Audrey, go ahead with your with your question. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm looking to become more of a broadcast meteorologist. So I have a lot of time in front of the green screen. Um, this is just doing like today's weather, uh, weekly weather. And also I have some segments where I'm talking about hurricanes and just describing different types of weather phenomenon. So in regards to putting a reel together, would it be best to have uh, different types of reels for each type of green screen, so just a today weather green screen or a weekly weather green screen, or would it be better to kind of just put a little bit of each into one big reel? Um, I think with your weather, um, it's funny, me and my meteorologist at work were just talking about this. Um, I think it's okay to have it all in one because when you're applying for a weather reel, so much more than reporters, your personality is everything. Um, viewers love their meteorologists the most <laughs> um, because it, you're, you're more than just telling the weather, right? You're really connecting. So many people rely on weather. Uh, honestly, some people tune into news just for weather uh, and no one cares about news. Um, so for me, I mean, personally, from what my understanding, I can't really speak because I'm not a weather person, but when you have that green screen, kind of how, if you look at a reporter reel, we kind of have these montages of standups, we have montages of anchoring, and we have montages of live hits, right? So you can have a montage of you in front of the weather, um, maybe breaking it up with those tosses or with that ad lib even, um, talking to your anchor, or if you are out in the field talking about weather, Think of that as kind of your stand-up portion if we're going to compare this to like a newsreel, right? Um, you have your green screen, which is, you can call that more of your anchoring. And then you have your segments, which you can call more of your stand-ups um, and kind of having a mix of, of those as well. Um, I don't think it's bad to have a, a view in front of the green screen. The biggest thing is you don't want it to be the same thing over and over and over and over again. You don't want one clip of you saying, all right, and out on the south end of Long Island, it's going to be sunny and 50 degrees. Next clip, all right, it's still sunny outside, blah, 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 right? We don't want that. Um, you know, you really want to show more of your character and your personality in a weather reel because that is really what people are going to look for. Um, I know with my weather person, my meteorologist, when he he does all of our recruiting for the weather side, um, God bless him, because I know nothing about science, but the biggest thing is, you know, he always says, can I, do I finish watching this real smiling? Or do I finish, do they make me laugh? Or do they make me feel like I know this person? Like, oh, I could go get a beer with them. You know, uh, the genuine, how genuine are you on camera? Um, so personally, I don't think you need, I think for weather people, you don't need to have a separate reel. Um, you would only need to have a separate reel if you're, you have your meteorology and then you have your reporter stuff. Um, but I think, I think you could do well with just having one. I'm not sure if anyone has other notes on that, um, but. I like that's yeah. Jonathan and Jessica also that too, you know, because, you know, Jonathan, you're in local news, Jessica, you're working with Newsday doing a new initiative. I'm sure weather is very important. It leads a lot of stories when weather goes bad. It's, you know, Stormwatch and, you know, whatever else you got. So Jonathan, start off with you and then Jess afterwards, please. What do you think about somebody who's going for weather, you know, as a different medium through all this? Yeah, I mean, well, I could not agree more with everything that Rachel said. I mean, uh, I think that even today, you know, even in the digital era, weather is still like the anchor of, of TV news, especially. Um, and if you, you know, you guys are younger than me, much younger than me now. I, I don't know what kind of like TV news personalities, you know, but for me growing up, like the only like local TV news and even, you know, network TV news na names I knew were meteorologists. They were they're just the biggest personalities in the city. They're the biggest personalities in, in the world, my, in, the, in the country in terms of news. My meteorologist is Sam Champion, who's been in this business for a very long time. And, um, you know, I, once I got to uh, start to work with him, um, I didn't really appreciate 
how good he was at his job until I started to look at even some of the other, you know, local meteorologists. When he is uh, very similar to Bill, like I was talking to before, when he is talking to you, he is, he, it seems like he is talking to you. You know, it's important for him to sometimes when he starts a, a weather hit, he's holding his coffee mug, he's holding out his arm, he's, he's kind of like beckoning you in to kind of go through this, uh, this uh, weather report uh, with him. And it's just so much more enjoyable to kind of watch him, you know, do his, his, his reports. Um, so uh, kind of picking back off of what Rachel said too, you know, th this is maybe a bit of like an extreme way of putting it, but like you almost some, I think want to, when you're thinking about your reel, almost think about it like a stand-up comedian, like putting together like their best, like five minutes. You want to workshop your personality too. You want to come up with uh, different kind of ways to convey what can be a pretty like, you know, repetitive uh, uh, job, you know, it's it, it generally, you know, I, I'm sure if you if you study meteorology, uh, you know, you probably get mad at me for saying that I'm sure there's a lot of like nuance and interesting things in terms of like, specific different weather patterns or whatever. But when I'm looking at it, it's like, it's going to rain, it's going to snow, it's going to be hot, it's going to be very cold. That's what I'm hearing. So what's more important to me is with that information, with that basic information, it's how you're giving it to me. How clear are you, you know, and how, how, how much do I kind of want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, be listening directly to you? And also the other thing is, I don't know if you're going to have any opportunity to do this, but another thing that's really uh, important is how you interact with other people. You know, that's another thing that Sam and my uh, traffic reporter, Heather O'Rourke, are, are just amazing at. They just really seem on TV like they really enjoy working together. They do too, off the scenes, at, behind the scenes. They're, 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 they're close friends now, but just, you can just tell that these, these people like, like each other, you know? And I think that just in general, people like to watch people who seem like they are actually like friends, you know? It, it's, it's kind of like you, you getting a sneak peek into, uh, you know, a, a bit of like a, a really like intimate like relationship there too. Kind of, kind of figuring back off that. Yeah, I mean, I was telling Phil before, like the biggest thing that when I'm out in the community, I get recognized a lot um, doing my job. And the number one thing I hear is that I'm just as genuine on camera as I am in person. And that's exactly what you want, no matter what reel you're doing. Um, other things I've got is I am best friends with my weekend meteorologist. We are literally the best buds in the world. People think that we're in a relationship all the time um, because we're that close and we have a really great on-camera uh, duo. And so you really kind of want to show that personality that you are well connected with. And we have people at my job who don't like each other in person, uh, who do not hang out outside of work, but on camera, again, you would never know it. Uh, and, and that's really important um, to play off, you know, of your personality and whatnot. Cause no matter, no matter how many jobs you have in this field, you're going to have anchors that you have really great rapport with um, and, and great chemistry. Chemistry is the biggest thing, especially I feel like for weather people, they're going to see if you are going to work well with those anchors. Um, and if, if you are going to be the right fit um, and match that personality as well. Um, I know one of the reasons why our weekend meteorologist was, was um, hired was because of my personality as well. And we knew that we were just going to connect and uh, he was right. Uh, Cause like I said, we're best friends now. So it's, you really want to make sure you're you're having that play off on your reel that you can have a connection with your anchor. Marcy has her hand up, then I want to go to Jess too about that point as well. Go yeah, ahead. I just I just want to echo um, a lot of this stuff and say that whether people look, they're going to know that you can talk in front of a green screen. You know, all you need is one shot of that. They know, you know, that's that's like okay, it's going to be sunny, blah 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 down the down the week. But next time it's raining out, next time it's a blizzard out, next time it's whatever out there, get out there and shoot some stuff where you're laughing, you're smiling, you're like, you know, you're in the middle of some horrendous weather or beautiful weather, whatever it is, just get out there and show that personality and be, be laughing, smiling. That's what they're looking for in a weather person more than, you know, the idea that you can stand in front of a green screen, tell us, you know, what the weekly forecast is going to be. 
Excellent. And Jess, what about that with whether people may be looking for with Newsday in a different media? Yeah, no, no, 100%. I agree with Mar what Marcy said. It's looking to, it's looking for someone who gets out there and covers all different types of weather. You know, like she said, get out there in the storms, get out there um, in the, the crazy weather. And also to add to that, I know we just brought on um, Bill Corbell, who um, Long Islanders love. Um, but, you know, you can showcase, you know, um, embrace the community that you're reporting in. So, you know, I know some of the things that he does that kind of makes him stand out to Long Islanders is he might go out to occasionally to Jones Beach if it's a nice day or to, you know, if we have a hurricane coming, you know, he's on the shores of the, the South Shore, you know, with the waves crashing in the background, embrace that community you're in. Um, and, you know, know know the the audience that you're you're connecting with um and even if you know you're applying to to a job in albany and it, it's it's different there show that you know you're embracing currently the the weather in the community on long Island, and they know that when they can feel confident that when you come to albany you'll embrace the the weather in the community that they have there um yeah. so they show that you're confident in that you show you're confident in that then they know coming into Albany, yeah, you might not be familiar with the area, but look at that. She rocked Long Island. She can rock Albany. So I think that's important too, just to add on to everyone's points. That's excellent. Thank you so much. It's great. Uh, believe yeah. it or not, we're starting to wind down a little bit. It's uh, already been an hour and 40 minutes uh, going strong. Um, so I want to make sure, you know, you have the opportunity to ask any other questions you may have. Um, maybe anything that we missed before you want to get uh, us to cover that we didn't address you know no, I, um, have, I have my reporter reel if if you want me to show an example of what like a news reel looks like um okay sure yeah we'll, we'll play a little bit of that absolutely and then we'll end with with some more questions to wrap us up that's great rachel go ahead yeah, sure. um do you want me to share my screen i can yeah, I, can yeah I, think the, I think the share i turned on for everybody okay so cool. yeah anybody can share their screen anytime they wanted to at this point so. <laughs> you know could have um yeah so this is my oops uh, let's do that. Share. Okay, so this is my uh, general MMJ reel. Like I said, I have two reels. I have a re investigative reporter reel and a uh, normal news reel. Um, the only difference really between the two is the fact that one has my investigative stories on it. This one has a feature piece and a uh, um, a hard news piece. So I won't really play the packages, but. Um, all together, my reel is like eight minutes long. Again, the longer side of it is the 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 re, um, the package part. Um, so, kind of, I was talking before a little bit about transitions as well. This one doesn't have any of my transitions. I kind of just flow into it. I don't have any of my anchor stuff on this because, again, if I'm applying to an MMJ job, I don't want to include any of that. So, um, uh, how Matt and Joe were saying before, I have a slate. You always want to have a slate on your reel because you want your contact, you want your title, you want your phone number, email. Biggest thing too, never put your work email on your your, <laughs> your slate. Do don't do it. Um, please put your personal or professional one. I had a couple uh, people email me that with their current employment. Don't know why they would do that. Because uh, again, also your emails are monitored at work and depending on where you are in your contract. I don't think you want your news director to know that you're looking for other jobs. <laughs> so um, I can just play a couple seconds of this. Thank you. And it's about five seconds long, this slate. There is a large amount of confusion right now. Questions being asked like, is the taxi service going away? Oh, I think you need to share your audio. So stop share quickly. And then you have to click this button that says share audio and then try it again if you could. Share, so stop, stop the share. share for now, yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's an annoying thing, it's, it's not a default. Go to share, and you'll see share computer oh, sound share on the bottom. Gotcha. I do that, I do that a lot of times. Yes, <laughs> there you go, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, for answer, no. Nothing is actually changing except there is a large amount of confusion right now. Questions being asked like, is the taxi service going away? Are ride shares going to be more expensive? The short answer, no. Nothing is actually changing except one main key factor, and that is the type of company that they are choosing to use. The future of the park has really grown concerned amongst the public within the last month, and mainly because they already thought it was sold years ago. And you can see that I am currently the only one on the property.
right now. The facility is completely dark inside. It's going to remain that way until tomorrow. There is one more loose end to this lawsuit after Judge Kessel reviewed the evidence presented to him about the school's property. It was determined that the village does actually own a small part of the building based on where it sits on the property. So it can become tricky if Anago School District and the village of Mattoon do move forward and keep the restriction of not turning it back into a school because the district actually cannot mandate that small part that the village owns. Yeah, Justin, four years ago, Wisconsin had 67% voter turnout, Trump leading Clinton by only 1%. And it's about the same margin that Biden is going to take this year. Now, I want to show you the difference of what happened yesterday. This is 2016. The only change, Door County. Ready? Boom. There it goes. It flipped back to blue in 2016. It flipped from blue to red. And this is what we're seeing. This is official. These are all ballots counted now today. Christmas shopping this holiday season can be even easier because you have so many different options to choose from, whether that's coming into the store itself and picking out a favorite outfit or two, or sitting down, grabbing your phone for a quick FaceTime shopping spree. It's not uncommon for scammers to target job seekers through things like their email, but a lot of time they actually are posing as recruiters on job boards like LinkedIn or even university apps such as Handshakes. Researchers suggest that those current penalties could actually be a contributing cause. First time OWI offenses equal to a comparison of a traffic ticket. And if you repeat that offense, drivers don't face mandatory jail or prison time until their fifth OWI conviction. Even then, it's not guaranteed they'll stay off the road. Fitness centers typically see increase in membership from the beginning of the new year all the way through the month of March. But this year with COVID-19 lingering, more people are getting out of the gym and working out at home with trainers actually releasing more inexpensive workout plans as well as thousands of videos actually available right on YouTube. We all know that Rhinelander is best known for our infamous hodag and now we're putting that hodag spirit into another thing that Wisconsinites care about, our alcohol. So when they're out on the water, this is what they're looking for. When purchasing a kayak or canoe, try to purchase one that has a bright color. This will actually be the first thing that boaters see on the water. Additionally, just make sure that your life vest is properly secure. So you kind of see so far, that's, uh, that's pretty much the first couple minutes of my reel. And I do have to do some work on this. This isn't my official reel either, which is nice. Um, but my first, you know, I start with my live hits. I go into my standups. Some of those live hits, I can definitely shorten a bit because um, by a few of them, again, you never want to have a long, long hit. I have a couple of them in there that I probably could shorten because again, you don't want your director recruiter person being like, okay, I've had enough of this person. Um, but the first couple of my clips were just me on camera. That was it. I wanted them to see me, my personality, what I looked like, because that is a large factor into the hiring process, I feel, is that what do you look like on camera? And then I get deeper and deeper into that creativity. Um, yeah, Maya, like you said, you thought you had a twin first. Exactly. Those creative stand-ups. Um, that has been my favorite stand-up to do. And I actually got the idea from other reporters. Um, make sure that you're getting that creative. Biggest kind of recommendation is watch other reporters. Um, I learned that trick from one of my colleagues um, who unfortunately doesn't work with us anymore, but he taught me how to do that. And it's actually super easy. And it looks really complicated, but it looks so great. And it's not that hard to do. Um, so things like that is, and then it just goes into, like I said, my two packages. Um, so hopefully you kind of got a little taste of what your reel could look like. That's excellent. Thank you so much. It's awesome. Great. And now uh, any other uh, questions we've got, anything work that um, you'd like to show last few minutes with we, we've got, um, you know, now's the time. So anything else we have? We haven't heard from a couple of you, so any questions you have? Uh, hey, just go ahead. Go to Marlon, please. Okay, uh, just one thing. Um, yes. For the for the demo reel, um, does uh, the uh, school work uh, um, uh, count? The school have a what account? I'm so sorry, I couldn't quite hear you there. Okay, okay. Let's say um, uh, there's. Let's say we're taking a class, like let's say uh, a journalism class, where sure. we did. Uh, a video on like like for example civil storm or not like does that count as a demo reel 100 percent, yeah 100 percent. my first so this was my first professional reel so my first broadcast reel 
which I won't show you because it's a mockery um, <laughs> to look at. 100%, everything I used for my first reel when I was uh, submitting and applying to jobs, everything was from Stony Brook. So Stony Brook Newsbreak, SeaWolf Storm or not, uh, you know, you can use that. Any standups you do from class, don't feel like, it's kind of like, your inter people think like internship experience isn't work experience. It is. It's the same thing with school stuff. Your school experience is experience. So definitely include that. Um, I feel like if you don't include it, then you really don't have a, a real right out the bat anyway, because unless you're freelancing or doing something else, um, I, people know that when you're applying to your first job, it probably is going to be all your stuff from college. Point. Anything else on that tab about, you know, go ahead, Marcy. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with that, but it, just Marlon, um, you need to have a light on your face so that if you ever do an interview on Zoom, um, you know, the, the interviewer is going to want to see you because right uh, now, because you're in front of a window. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, it is. You look, like you're in, you look like you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, I have to turn on the lights, even though it's day sunny outside. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So just don't forget that. Like if you're ever going to do an interview, one of the, you really don't want to have, you don't want to look like you have no, you're in the dark. You're like, they've covered your face. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I actually forgot to do that. <laughs> well, do, now's your chance. Do you want to do it now? We want to see, we could see what you look like. Uh, okay, good. Go ahead. Uh, Jonathan. Yes. I just want to make a more like general point uh, something that, uh, you know, I remember, uh, kind of going through around uh, this time uh, and uh, something I kind of wish somebody would would tell me, which is that, you know, uh, you know, very early on, you know, at the end of college and during my internships and early on in my career, even now, sometimes uh, one of like the biggest stresses for me is like, where exactly am I in my progress in terms of like my competitors or colleagues like where do I stand am I doing a good job am I progressing properly am I you know do I have a leg up on on other, uh you know other people that are at a similar level as me um and uh the one thing that I can tell you guys the students that are here right now and anybody that might be you know watching this recording is that uh you guys are ahead of the game and the you know kind of one of my main takeaways early in my career is you would be really amazed by how far you can get just by showing up, you know, just by showing that you're willing to work, showing that you're willing to, uh, you know, help showing that you're showing that you're willing to kind of put in uh, a little bit of extra work here and there. Um, and, you know, just the just fact that you're here right now is, uh, to me tells me that you have the extra bit of motivation that is going to be able to help you separate from the pack as you um, continue uh, down your path. So I would just say the fact that you're here right now is, is, is the first step in your journey in terms of like, uh, you know, kind of staying ahead, becoming a successful journalist. So I would just say like, you know, keep this up right now, you know, in my previous job, at New York One, I, I right before I went to ABC, I was uh, internship uh, coordinator there, and um, you know uh, I, I remember speaking to a group of uh, kids at uh, uh, York University, York College, um, and at the end of the uh, there was about thirty kids in there, and at the end of the uh, uh, talk, I told them, you know, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put my email on the board right now. And what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you to reach out to me and uh, inquire about an internship because I had 30 internship slots to fill. And what's going to, and this is what I said to them, what's going to happen is there's going to be about three of you that do that. And you guys are going to get internships. And then you're going to have, you know, this extremely critical, uh, you know, resource early in your, you know, path um, that a bunch of other people that had the same opportunity could have had, had they just sent an email, you know? Um, and I have found that to be perhaps like the most 
important, you know, trait that I have developed over the course of my career to get to where I am now is just the willingness to be there and the willingness to learn, progress, you know, uh, always, you know, be soliciting feedback and, um, you know, you know, staying motivated. Um, and I think that just, just with that, you can get a really long, long way. Can I, can I echo that for a second? Um, when I was at Stony Brook, I worked for the press. I photographed football, soccer, cricket, even. Um, I always wanted to shoot professional baseball. And I wanted an internship with the Mets. I didn't know how to get one. I did, there was none posted. You couldn't find something like that. So what did I do? I went online. I found out who the Mets chief photographer was. I found his website. He had an email and phone listed. I emailed him. I didn't hear back for at all. The next week, I'll follow up with him. I emailed him again. Didn't hear back. And at that point, I'm like, ah, maybe, maybe he's just ignoring me. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do something that a ton of people nowadays do not do. I actually cold called him. And I called him on his phone. He answered. He's like, hey, um, I don't use that email anymore. I didn't update my website. You want to come shoot a, a couple baseball games? Absolutely. And from that day on, it's been like about six or seven years now, I've been photographing maybe 30 to 40 Mets games a year. And I've developed a great friend, lifelong friendship with him. And I do work for the Mets every year. And it, it was a position I kind of created myself. There was no internship. There was nothing. I just reached out to him and I made my own path. If you put the work in, even something like that, I, how much time does it take to send an email? Two minutes, a phone call, 30 seconds. It was in under five minutes worth of work. I got myself into photographing the New York Mets. It, you, you can blaze your own path. You don't necessarily have to just look on online, like what's available. You can go and make your own path like that. If you reach out to people, 99% of the time, well, maybe not 99, maybe, maybe at 80% of the time, they're going to look to help you. Just reach out to people. I, I think that's one of the best pieces of advice I could give you. Be ambitious. Be ambitious. That is like the biggest thing that I can ever say. Be, don't be afraid to be ambitious and put yourself out there. For, for years, my ambition was looked down upon by so many of my colleagues and, and other students and whatnot, but I got everything I ever worked for. And that, that is the biggest thing. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I know you guys are all on LinkedIn. I know you guys, a lot of you guys have reached out to me through LinkedIn. Feel free to, if you connect with producers, connect with other reporters, connect with anchors or news directors, recruiters, and any time that you connect with them, send a message, send, Hey, this is where I'm at in my career. I would love to send you some stuff. Here's my reel. Here's my resume. This is what I'm looking to do. This is what I could do for you if you were to hire me. And it just, you know, follow up, be ambitious and don't ever apologize for it either. Um, you know, kind of what was Joe was saying, like, all the internships I ever got, I never applied to the single one of them through the website. I got them all through networking and saying, hey, this is what I can do for you. Take a chance on me. They all did. I got to go to London. I got to work for BBC. I got to freelance for them. I still can freelance for them if I wanted to. Make those connections and don't ever apologize for being ambitious because that you will never, ever, you will look back and never regret it. Excellent. Marcy, that, go ahead, please. That is some of the best advice. Absolutely. What Joe said, what Rachel said, um, Jonathan, the same thing. It's no one's going to knock on your door and say, hey, I hear, a, I hear a budding reporter lives here. Would you like to come, uh, you know, would you like some advice or would you like to come work for me? You know, if you're, if you're not putting yourself out there, because I'm telling you, most people aren't. Most people are doing exactly, you know, what Jonathan said when, oh, he puts a thing on the blackboard and guess what? Three people respond. I do it all the time. I talk to classes all the time. I say, reach out to me if you want me. Two of them do. Three of them do. And they're the ones that I end up helping. And they're the ones I get that get the advice. And they're the ones that are that are ambitious enough, as Rachel said, to to, you know, forge their own path. So absolutely. I mean, that story, Joe's about about, you know, the baseball is just awesome. It's, it's just, you know, it's great. Excellent too. And Maya, I think Maya had a great quote. Maya, want to talk about that quote a little bit and what that means to you? Yeah, like, um, you know, if opportunity doesn't knock and like being 
at a SUNY school in comparison to Ivy League sometimes, you know, that can be, that could kind of hinder your opportunity sometimes. So yeah, like you guys were saying, I loved all that advice, you know, it just makes me smile, you know, build that door. Maya, can I just say something to that too? It, uh, just just because you brought up the the Ivy League thing, because you know, going to going to Stony Brook, choosing not to go to graduate school, you know, going right into the business after that. I for the first um, couple of years of my career, you know, you know, I still had that kind of like motivated mentality, but there was something in the back of my head. I was like, man, like you know, how am I going to like stack up? Uh, to like the, 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 these kids that are, you know, going to NYU, going to Columbia J school after, uh, after, you know, undergrad, like what's going to happen. And then another, a year later, all of them, uh, all of my interns, when I was internship coordinator, were kids at a NYU, Columbia, all these top Syracuse, all these top, uh, uh, you know, journalism schools that, uh, you know, people talk about, like, you know, if you want to, if you want to make it, you know, it's good to have a, some prestige like that. Me, per, for me personally, it's not important at all. You know, uh, Stony Brook, especially, it's the best decision I ever made. Um, it really, uh, everything that I needed to know out of college, I got from undergrad at, at Stony Brook, and then I just hit the ground running. And, you know, there's, there, there's never been somebody uh, that uh, I have, uh, you know, come across that went to, you know, uh, Columbia or NYU or anything like that, um, that I thought, wow, like if I just went to Columbia, you know, I, I would be, I, I would be uh, just as good as them. You know, that's never, never been a thought that's crossed my mind since. I, I, uh, I pit my Stony Brook graduates against, against Columbia graduates in a minute, in a minute. Yeah, and kind of going off that too, like, I mean, I've worked with so many reporters, that I've never met someone who went to an Ivy League school, you know, like even um, Sylvan and I were talking about this before too, when I was applying for internships, like, yeah, you can hire some from NYU, but I worked with NYU students at BBC, and they didn't know half the stuff that I knew, <laughs> and like, that's like really sad, since you're paying like almost a hundred grand to go to a school, um, but honestly, too, also talking about on the point that someone brought up of like staying motivated, that can be really hard when you do get into your first job. I know that was something I struggled with getting into my first job. Like I, I was in a really weird predicament where I was coming off a high from another fellowship to coming to Nowheresville, Wisconsin. Um, but for me, like, honestly, I recently had to like pull myself out of a hole because I my contract's almost up. I have another year left and that seems like a really long time, but in six months, I'm going to have to start applying to jobs again. And I really had to say to myself, what do I want to do? Do I still want to be in TV? Do I not want to be in TV? Um, and kind of going off that, you know, my big dream is still to be in the UK and working for some company over there. And before I took this job, I had that opportunity and a pandemic kind of screwed me over. And being in Wisconsin has made me think, well, how that had so far, such a far away dream now, how am I going to get that? And I really had to say to myself, well, Rachel, how do you get it in the first place? And it's connecting and it's reaching out and it's not losing your fire and your passion. You guys have heard the saying before from Dean Schneider, you know, you can pick journalism, but really journalism picks you um, at the end of the day. And if you want something, go out and get it. Um, you know, whether that's connecting and when you get in your first job, always be looking for the next, like obviously get situated in your job and do your job well and know that you're committed to it for two years. But at the end of the day, you should always be thinking of that next opportunity of, okay, how am I going to keep my connections up? I know so many people who get their first job and just stop everything else, connecting, networking and whatnot. And it's not so much that like you have to network and you know, be putting yourself out there, obviously, but it's just having someone in your back corner this way, when you do start looking for that next job, um, you have that connection. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm reaching out to a lot of recruiters who wanted me two years ago or whatever, um, and staying with that just to always give yourself options. Um, you never know. There's also too something that's really scary for me is like, there's a lot of layoffs happening right now in the journalism world, especially with Sinclair. And, uh, I know, um, next star is buying out gray or vice versa or something like that so always keep your fire always like stay on your toes and always keep everything updated um because you never know what's going to happen in the field so excellent great uh matthew go ahead i just want to add um to what uh what you was somebody i forgot who it was already it's been going all around oh i think it was um 
it was Jonathan, I believe, about, uh, you know, sort of, well, who said about not apologizing? Who was that? Oh, I me, sorry. Yeah, don't apologize. I didn't want to, didn't want to misattribute. That's okay. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, but what I would say is this also, I've come to speak in, at the uh, Stony Brook, I've come to speak to Rick uh, Riccioppo's class and a couple of the others. I was in uh, with Marcy in, in her class. And, and really the, the key is don't stop asking questions. Don't stop looking for people to help you. Don't stop. Don't give up. The only reason that I am where I am now is because I didn't. Because when I went as a sophomore to Stony Brook to the internship coordinator and said, look, I really want to do an internship because I'm very interested in television. Oh, no, no, you need to wait till you're a junior. I said, well, how am I supposed to know if I want to be in television if I don't start when I'm young enough to change my mind? At which point, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person named Alfreda James, who I believe is still there, um, said to me, you know what? I like this idea. Let's figure this out. And I sat down with her and she created this whole program for me through something called the Eureka program, which I don't know if it still exists, but it was sort of like an independent study type deal. And because of Alfreda James, I was able to intern at News 12 and the rest is history um, because I just didn't give up. And that's what you just, if you want it bad enough, you'll get there. Just do it. Get out there, look for everything you can. You know, in being in these classes with, with Marcy and, and with Rick and a couple of the others, um, you know, I would stand up there sometimes in, in like Rick's class and speak for 40 minutes or so. At the end of the, you know, the class, I say, look, I'm available if anyone wants to come over and ask me any questions. Maybe five or six kids would come over at the end of the class. Of that, three at the time would ask for my information. I get one email. That is not good. Okay, you have an opportunity. You have resources. You have people willing to help and answer questions. Use them. Do not simply take away from this thing. Wow, that was cool. We all, you know, got together on these rectangles on the screen. It was a lot of fun, and we learned a lot of stuff. Okay, don't leave it there. We're all here. We're somewhere in virtual land, but we're here. Um, and don't forget to reach out to us. Don't forget to ask us questions. Okay, your future depends a lot on us too. And our future depends a lot on you. You think of it that way. The future of this, the journalism business. Okay, we're all in this together. So keep in touch. That's all I have to say. Thank you all for, uh, for coming out. That's all I just want to say. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And thank Phil, if I could plug myself here, I have job opportunities at my career, right at my uh, <laughs> newsroom right now. If you want to apply, Selvin has sent out the email for it. Please consider applying. We have producer opportunities. We have MMJ opportunities. We have five people leaving this summer. Five. Some of them are anchors. Some of them are MMJs. Some of them are producers. We have opportunities. If you, no one gets hired, I do all the work. So please consider <laughs> applying. Um, and even if you just want to know more about the job, you all have my email. I know you all have my social media. Reach out. That's all you have to do. Rachel, what city are you in? I'm in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. It's market 134. Um, and it's in the Northwoods of Wisconsin. So really great. I know it's nowheresville, Wisconsin, I say, but it's a really what's, great- What's the nearest big city? Um, we're about three hours away from Milwaukee, four hours from Madison, Green Bay is maybe two. Um, city, city, yeah, that's them. But yeah. we are part of Wausau market as well. So that's like the closest city part of us. So. Uh, a lot of great first opportunities. We have people going from 134 to market 12. We just had someone hired there. We have market people now in market 24, market 10. Um, so consider applying. Cause again, if no one gets hired, I get stuck doing all the work and I don't mind doing that, but working 60 plus hours a week isn't really my forte anymore. So consider applying. Even if you have questions, you know, always reach out. <laughs> That's excellent. That's amazing. Thank you. Okay, anybody? Um, I, I guess that would wrap things up. I got to say, this was like a master class in reels and a whole area that we've never had before. This recording and what we've gone through today is pure gold. Uh, I, For one, I cannot thank our panelists enough for their time. Marcy McGinnis, Rachel Eiler, Joe Ryder, Jonathan Millen, uh, Jessica Suarez, and uh, Matthew Moskowitz. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you've done for us today. We really do appreciate everything that you've given.
Okay, I guess uh, I'll do it for now. Those who are graduating, hey, alumni board was the reason why this happened. And the motivation of the alumni board to give back is what this did. So please, you know, graduating is not the end. You know, it really is it. Uh, we would really would like to keep these things going because it's these ideas from alumni that allow opportunities like this to happen, which I think has been truly remarkable. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much. This means so much to me and for me. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Be well. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.